What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the No Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Uh, Brian, uh, another show on our in our review of 2022 best performances and worst. And worst. <laughs> yes, and worst. Would you like to start off, Brian? I have my I, I have to think about my worst. Interesting. If I'm being objective, the worst lead performance. Lead, I'm focusing really on the lead. Although I actually think the worst supporting performance is the easiest choice on the list. See if you agree when I get there. Worst lead performance I have is Jared Leto as Morbius. I, I just Jared Leto has an Oscar. He is an incredibly talented method actor. He should yeah. not do anything in this genre ever. Ever again. again yeah. It's oil and water. Michael Morbius, his portrayal, it just doesn't, it doesn't click. It doesn't work. It goes nowhere. I don't want to see him opposite Tom Holland, Spider-Man or with Tom Holland, Spider-Man. I, I just don't, I have no interest. It's a, it's just, it's just from minute one to the end. It just is a miscast. Um, and for a movie, which didn't have a huge budget, but in some ways they were trying to recapture the Tom Hardy magic with Venom, that they were going to lean on their Academy Award winning yeah. lead. That's part of why I think it's a worst performance because this movie had to have him be an A plus and well, I've C minus at best D it was, I think he's, he's my one, um, my one A I, I got to do it. I'm sorry. We've been on it all year. It's the rock, man. Yeah. 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 That's, that's my worst performance right there. I, this, cause I was leaning towards that as well, but because you picked that I, I decided let me let me go with what what's so you, right speak on speak on Dwayne Johnson as Black Adam as Black Adam his performance Brian was what we said it was just a, a rendition of Terminator 2 in the relationship that Terminator had with the kid in Terminator 2 so what makes it a poor performance Brian is to me is just all the mounting talk the rock um stating that he's been do trying to do this for 15 years that this is his passion project yeah we got rampage san andreas and all these other skyscraper coming out but this is his passion project he, i don't think he really or truly honored the character of black adam despite what he may say He didn't honor the, the true character of Black Adam. You said it before in our, in our review, Brian. There was no performance. There was no rage. There was no outburst. There was no sense of arrogance. There was just a cold performance as if he was a Terminator, a robot. So the performance is non-existent. And it's a shame that a movie that we've been waiting for 15 years again, it just truly baffles me that you can say that with a straight face and give us the, pr the product that at the end of the day was a disgrace because pretty much they copied, each shot was copied from a different movie. And you can't deny it. Is he... Rock can say I was I was I was uh honoring the 20 years of superhero films in this movie. Sure you can say that. You did a horrible job at it. Just everything about this performance, Brian, was non-existent. It was just merely uh I show up and the fans will love me. The movie's gonna do great. And uh, although he probably changed his mind when he did that uh, secret scene with with Henry Cavill um, two months before the, the movie comes out. So, Brian, the worst performance, there's nobody that can convince me of a worse performance than that one. Based on what you were trying to do, what you were trying to sell us on. You're trying to sell us on this idea that the, that the powers 
hierarchy of power was about to change and you wanted a message sent out to Flash and Wonder Woman and all this talk. And Brian, it was just that talk. The worst performance goes to, to, to BlackRock. I got nothing to add to that. That's it at all. That's it. However, <laughs> I don't even think he was the worst performance in his own movie because I think the worst supporting performance of the year goes to the kid. Oh, the kid. The kid is the, the, the kid yeah. is the that is the that is one of the worst that if someone clipped that and was like, this is a reason why superhero genre movies should not continue, I would just kind of like rub the back of my neck and say, I don't have a, <laughs> I don't have a comeback to that because that was horrendous. Yeah. That, that, that. I feel bad for the kid because, like, you know, you're, you're young, like, you, you know, you don't, you don't always get, you don't have creative control over that stuff, but like that entire conception of that character was hideous. But then to, with a, seemingly straight face on the part of the writers have him be like we talked about Andor exploring the the seeds of rebellion against the empire to have that kid be the inspirational heartbeat for these people rising up it just is it makes you cringe i cringed in the theater while i was watching it real time i was like they're not really good oh <laughs> no they did Yo, it, when I when I watched the scene of the the dead uh, army, it reminded me of the Clash of the Titans. Yes, the, 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 Ray Harryhausen, <laughs> the, 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 the stop motion skeletons, a hundred percent. Oh, it was like, what year are we in? <laughs> it's like, it's like Brian. It's like if we if we met the the people behind Black Adam and they were sitting in front of us, it's like, dude. Don't get mad at me, what I'm telling you. You did this. I didn't do this. You did this. Yeah. But you wrote it because you wanted John Connor. You wanted some cheesy version of John Connor versus opposite Arnold's Terminator 2. That's what they wanted, right? And that this, this trope is hard to pull off when it in its best case. <laughs> and this was in one of the worst designs we've ever seen. So I... I don't, I'm not even going to name the actor because I don't want to hurt the actor's cause too much here, but it, 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 just, it just stands apart as just a horrible choice. Yeah. From the I mean, he's, literally in the, he's literally like in the first modern scene of the movie, basically, right? And then they have the allegory for the ancient boy, and you're kind of yeah. like, uh oh, they're trying to carry this forward. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My, so, my it, only, it, I, I, there were several. I, I thought about like, I thought about floating Mark Ruffalo, but we, I almost don't want to like make you too angry about that sort of stuff. But like, and he wasn't in it maybe in She-Hulk enough, but I had one other one that really like, I'm ang still angry about. I think it really hurt its movie. We talked about it at the time. It still really galls me. Korg, that's my other. Oh. The overuse of Taika himself in Thor Love and Thunder and Korg taking lines and taking scenes that should have gone to main characters, maybe could have gone to a true portrayal of Hercules. I can't forgive it. I think it's horrendous. Yeah. I hope it never happens again. Hey, and I think it will never happen again, especially with, I don't think Taika will ever come back to this genre. Um, some people just are good at doing what they do and are, are, are masters at what they do, but sometimes their 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 vision of certain things and how things should be done doesn't apply to everything. So it was the classic uh, case of Korg in very small doses in Ragnarok. Got me to chuckle. Korg in a very small scene in Endgame. Okay, more of the <laughs> same, but still a little bit entertaining. But Korg riding oh, shotgun, no, no. Yeah. no. Yeah. Those are the worst performances. Yeah, yeah. Those are the worst performances of 2022. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of were the worst performances of uh, in either a show or or well, well actually just this is just the lead right lead lead performances well, right we did, no we we did supporting we did lead and supporting for worst maybe before we do best. Ah, I mean, okay, okay. You seem to have a beat on best. I had a, I had a tough time with. I had, a, I was an easy time with best supporting. I had a devil of a time with best lead, but 
I mean, best performances would have for me. Oscar Isaac is up there. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, his performance. That whole, that whole, that, that for, for some reason, I and not because it, I don't. It never happened to me, but how his multiple personalities are created. Watching that was just a, a very like impactful and powerful um moment and just the way they pulled that off and watching oscar isaac go through these different characters and making each one of them believable and we said brian this was gonna have to be a hell of a performance and he pulled it off 100 percent. so this is definitely for me um i i would say because i've been i've been sharing uh his uh performance in in the show all, all throughout the year when it was on and uh yeah he's he's definitely my top performer oh all right i i i respect i respect the commitment to it um i'll put my other nominees like i said i don't have a high conviction call here but i think diego luna has to be nominated i just i think... was thinking him but it's like he wasn't like yeah well that's the thing He's not asked to be front and center for a lot of his own show. And I think it. I think it's a credit to him that he embraced the role that way. He didn't insist or push or grouse that he didn't have more lines or more, more of the action. I think it worked perfectly for setting up everyone in the show. I hope, I, you know, he was nominated for a Golden Globe, I believe, which I thought was interesting. Uh, so someone no took note of how he portrayed the role. Yeah. So it's like one of those where the show doesn't work without him doing that. But it wasn't like Diego Luna was maxing out his own acting prowess in the show because he wasn't asked to. So it's an interesting debate. If you consider Tenoch Huerta a lead, I think he should be on the list from nominees. I think it depends if you consider him the lead or not. I do. I think when we debated, we put him as a lead performer in our assessment of Wakanda Forever. Okay. I think he delivers a compelling version of Namor that is both true in spirit to the comics, but different as well. I think he also does a great job of teeing up the future of what this character could be. And mm -hmm. I love the emotional range. Like I love his conversation with Shuri. I love, you know, the brutality that he displays in the action. So I'm on board. I, I am pro Tenek Huerta. Uh, and I, I'm excited to see where his MCU future lies. So I think he's a nominee. I don't know if it's a transcendent performance, but it's a memorable one for me. Um, I think one of the performances, Brian, that we should mention, Pattinson. Yeah, he was my other nominee. Good. I'm glad you. I'm glad you thought of it too. I think what would have gotten him number one was if the Bruce Wayne part of it was there and never was. Um, we have yet to see that persona um, and we have hopes that we get introduced to that persona in the next film. But as Batman, Brian, he was, I think everything, not everything, there are certain things that I wish they would have tried to do better. Um, but as Batman, Brian, he he delivered a, a performance that's difficult to 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 pull off. He's certainly an honorable mention in in, in terms of best performance of 2022. It is a real performance. Like this is clearly something that he sat down, read the comics material, thought about how to interpret Bruce Wayne at this stage of his life. You're right. It is a Batman movie. It's called The Batman. It's not called The Bruce Wayne. Yeah. But I think the underrated part of the performance is the physical acting that he does as Batman. The scenes, like at the crime scenes, when he's almost not moving, but he's just kind of looking and reacting with just his face in the cow. That's acting. Like, yeah. I don't care what anyone says. You don't have to be, you know, Daniel Caffey in the courtroom <laughs> screaming at Colonel Jessup to be acting. Yeah. So I, I think his physical performance as Batman is very interesting I, I enjoyed it very much i can't wait to see more of it and you're right i i happen to think the bruce wayne thing is by design i happen to think they have a plan for that personality too because even at the end of that movie the last monologue kind of acknowledges i need to evolve and i need to change a little bit in terms of my approach to this 
And so I do think there's design here, but you're right. It, it also, for me, it like fell in that category, almost similar to where tough. It's very, it's memorable. I, I went back and watched the Batman the other day and I enjoyed it just as much again. It's not necessarily like, it's not on the level of like Keith Ledger as a Joker. It's not like a legendary performance yet, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we may look back on it as the beginnings of that. If this trilogy carries forward, we may look at, you know, like Batman Begins ages incredibly well because of what came after. We, I wonder if we're going to look back on the Batman and say his performance in that initial outing really set the path for something that became legendary. So yeah, yes, I, I think know. he's, I think he's an honorable measure for lead performances. Um, you have anyone else for leads? I have supporting is where I had a lot. That's where I think the gold was this year, but. Uh, no, that's it. Um, yeah, supporting. I already, you already know it was my number one. All right, go for it. Angela Bassett. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you then you can't put anybody on top of her as as far as best supporting actress. That performance that she gave in that movie was I again. I wish that in the trailers they never showed some of her performance. Agreed. Um, and we just waited for the release of the movie. But yeah, she's she's definitely number one. She was nominated for a Golden Globe. We haven't gotten Oscar nominations. I would be very surprised if she's not on the list for that. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the thing I the thing I enjoyed most about it maybe was that you knew it wasn't just acting for her. That it, it did add something in those moments to know that like she's one of the elder statesmen on set. This cast is trying to grieve and carry forward. And you can just feel it. You feel it in the speech. You feel it in the intensity where she's like, my entire family is gone. And you're like, she, this isn't just lines to her at that moment. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and I mean, as we've said, like, I, you know, the woman does not age either. She looks phenomenal in the costumes yeah. that were brilliant. And it's just, uh, you know, I I just wish we got more. I would take in more seats if we could have gotten. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think I think so. I think she wins. I agree with you, but I think this was a rich category. Okay. So I think Colin Farrell's got to get mentioned if we're talking <laughs> the Batman. I mean, it's a it's a couple of scenes, but man, did he! I mean, we talk about setups and getting you interested in spinoffs and shows. I mean, tell me you're not dying to see the Penguin after that no, definitely. nine minutes that he's on screen. Definitely, definitely. That's an act. That's a transformation. That's the side of Colin Farrell I didn't know oh, yeah. was in there after decades of Hollywood. Yeah, definitely. Um, that that performance was one of the best things that came out of out of that movie. Um, for me, it was provided one of the most one of the moments when in a movie there wasn't a lot of humor. He provided some of that humor. Um, yeah, he certainly shouldn't be left off that list. We talked about a little bit on the shows. I did want to give a shout to Anthony Starr's Homelander. I think that you know, he I think that's one of the better TV performances that's out there. Probably some people forget about it, but you know, he just keeps getting better and better every season. So definitely, if you if you haven't seen the show, watch it for him. If nothing else, uh, he's he's amazing. And then the last one, I couldn't pick one, so I just put the entire cast of Andor. I don't even know what to what to. Denise Goff, Stellan Skarsgård, Nemec, yeah, Andy it's, Serkis. It's hard. It's hard. You can't, it's hard Moth, you can't, I, to me, it's like you can't take away one. We had this power rankings thing, but when you're talking, as I said, when you're talking about awards, like this is the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, and the parts are pretty damn awesome. Yeah. So the entire supporting cast of Andor, to me, as a collective, is on this list. Most definitely. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think are the best um, lead and best supporting uh, actor and actresses and the worst supporting and 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 lead actor and actresses in a lead role in a movie or film. I mean, in a movie or a show. Yeah, this, there, there were a lot of great performances, Brian, but the, certainly there were those that stood out very much. I mean, I was even thinking about... But like you said, Andor is hard to pick one um, out of the bunch because they were just all fantastic. Um, Forrest Whitaker to me is still like oh, I, I didn't like mention him. You're right. I didn't even, <laughs> see. That's the problem with this show. I didn't mention him. I didn't mention Marva. I didn't mention Adrian. I didn't mention like 
six other people who <laughs> should have been mentioned. You're right. There's just so there's just so many in that show, man. But the ones that stood like if we had to do a whole show and, and figure out who wins it, it, it is a long talk because each and each one of them did a fantastic job, man. And I wish a couple of them dudes didn't die, but because <laughs> I thought he was dope. Um but yeah, let us know in the comment section below. What you guys think of our picks? Let us know what your picks are and uh, hit that like and subscribe button. Share with your friends and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.